Hello, everybody. This is session number three of the Data Recur group. This group is about collaboration of library maintainers and users in the closure data ecosystem. And today we'll have a session about Meander, this library by Joel Holbrooks, who will be talking in a moment. And as usual, we'll begin by introducing ourselves really briefly. And, you know, each one of us is invited to say something about, you know, what you do, what you're interested in, and, uh, you know, your hopes for future collaborations, etc. And then uh, you can ask another person to uh, tell about themselves. Um, uh, Ethan, would you, would you like to be the first one? Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Ethan Miller, and um, I mostly uh, do closure stuff um, outside of work because my company doesn't use it. Um, uh, and uh, I've been interested in data stuff and in closure, and so I, in the SciClosure community, I, um, which combines those two interests, I've been kind of hanging around and helping to organize and doing some contributions when I can to different um libraries and projects um right now i'm working on a um project uh that uh, is a funded by closures together that is uh, adding a um uh primitive to the tablecloth library that we talked about in the i think it was the last session among other things uh <clears throat> and uh in that library Usually you deal with data sets and this project is about giving some presence to the column as like a primitive entity that has an API that allows you to run functions and operations on a column as opposed to the data set. Um, yeah, so um, it's kind of what I'm up to right now. Uh, let's see, well, Joel, I think you'll probably introduce yourself later. So maybe Lukash. Hello. Yes, my name is Łukasz. I'm based in Poland. Uh, I'm a Clojure developer and sometimes a coding bootcamp instructor. Uh, I used to participate in Cyclosh meetings in the past, but I had a long break and I hope I'm, I'm back now. Um, maybe Timothy? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Tim. I'm originally from Australia. Uh, I like Clojure. Uh, and uh, Meander sounds really interesting, so I was, uh, I've, I've been using Meander a bit, uh, and, I, and I like it, and uh, I'd love to hear what Joel has to say about, uh, especially the, the Zeta branch, which uh, <laughs> uh, sounds really intriguing. Um, uh, right now, I'm building a diagramming app called Hummy.app, and uh, the reason I think diagrams are important is because uh, a lot of the value I've gotten out of computers is through building graphs. And I feel like most of our diagramming tools are about designing uh, pictures more than creating graphs. So I'm trying to build something specifically for creating graphs. Uh, and yeah, uh, looking forward to hearing what Joel has to say uh, about Meander. Are there any other new people who should introduce themselves or uh, does everybody introduce themselves? Daniel, sorry. Oh yeah, uh, maybe Yi, would you like to tell about yourself? Oh, you're on mute. Oh uh, yeah, hi, I'm Yifei. Um, uh, that's my first name, that's, uh, yeah, doesn't include my last name, um, anyway. I've been using Clojure for a year, um, working um, mostly on or related to data hike. Um, and I have a background in data science, um, I guess, as well. Um, I, I don't like the term data science. <laughs> anyway. uh, yeah, hence my interest in Cyclosh and, and this, um, its tools. And thank you so much. And Brett, would you tell about yourself? Sure. Hi. Um, I didn't expect to introduce myself. I thought I could just come here and be a voyeur, but um, my name is Brett. I'm a closure backend developer. Uh, I work for a company called Beacon. We work in the aircraft maintenance space. And um, 
we have a GraphQL API in, in the back end that drives a, a web client and a mobile client. And um, I've just been seeing some information about Cyclosion on, on some forums. And, and I was literally just yesterday looking at um, starting to work meander into our code for some data transformations and uh, and then just saw this meeting pop up on um, Clojureverse. So I thought I'd join in and see what it's about. And that's it. Wonderful. Um, yeah, by the way, Dan, Dan, hello, thank you for joining. Perfect timing. We are just introducing ourselves. And in a moment, maybe if you like, we'll ask you to, to tell something about yourself. Uh, my name is Daniel. I do statistics mostly. And uh, in, in the Clojure community, I'm involved mostly in study groups these days and working on some tooling for the coming Clojure data science course that is hopefully coming in the coming months and uh, yeah and uh, Dan if it is comfortable would you like to say something about yourself uh, sure hey I'm I'm just walking uh, with my son right now we're just heading back from dropping off my daughter at daycare there's Ellis say hi 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 hey. uh, so yeah so um, I work at the uh, BC Center for Disease Control, uh, where I do genomic analysis. And um, generally, you know, day to day, we mostly use Python and R, uh, but I have had a chance to deploy a small uh, closure script uh, website for displaying some quality control results for our, our COVID genomics data. Um, and so sometimes I look for opportunities to use closure where it's a, a good fit. Um, but most of the other developers uh, don't know, uh, aren't familiar with Clojure or Clojure script. So uh, stick with Python and R for most of our day-to-day -day stuff. But I, I'm very, very interested in learning more about Clojure. So yeah, that's what I do. That is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I guess uh, we will begin in a moment. And uh, Joel, if you wish, you could tell about yourself and then uh, present sure. whatever you find. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so hi, I'm I'm Joel Holbrooks. Um, I've been uh, a member or, of the closure community, or whatever that means, uh, for the last I think almost ten years. I started uh, 1.3, maybe just before 1.3 came out. So I've been doing closure for a long time. But I consider myself a polygot uh, poly polygot programmer. Um, I've always had a really strong interest in programming languages and um, spent probably like the last, um, I don't know, maybe six years uh, sort of steeped in that. Um, I I picked up um, a book called uh, Semantics Engineering with PLT Redux uh, a while back and I got really hooked on um, uh, programming language semantics and um, also through that book, I, I came uh, in contact with term rewriting um and lots of logic programming stuff uh <laughs> and i kind of just really fell in love with the idea of sort of symbolic manipulation um and really wanting to kind of bring um some of that to closure because you can with macros and um i think it's very nice to um there's this nice property that mathematics has uh, for the most part if you understand what the symbols mean um, the transformations that occur on paper are really beautiful and nice, and um, you don't have to really think about how anything's happening. It just, it just happens, right? Um, so uh, I wanted to bring that uh, to closure with Meander, and that's been sort of like my primary um, uh, hobby, uh, hobby project for <clears throat> the past, uh, I guess, five years, maybe five years now, you know, um, and. Um, more recently, um, I'm starting to um, turn my attention to machine learning. Um, it's really clear to me that the future is very much headed in that direction. Um, and really what pushed me uh, over the edge was um, uh, the recent release of um, Midjourney and then now Stable Diffusion, the image generation stuff. Um, I have an artistic background, so these are just like, this is like a... Uh, I'm like I'm like a I'm like a bug to a light, you know. This is this is like a bright beacon, and I want to learn everything about it. Um, so, uh, but I can go on and on about all this stuff. Um, 
I also like, uh, uh, sorry, I also have one more hobby, which is um, Houdini uh, and Unreal Engine. I really like uh, playing with these softwares. Um, Houdini is really, really cool. I think if uh, you have an interest in data and you have an interest in uh, 3D or even 2D um, and you really value the sort of like mindset you get in with Clojure, uh, Houdini it has been doing really cool immutable data flow uh, programming kind of stuff uh, since like the late 80s. Uh, you should check it out. It's really, really cool. So anyways. And I ramble a lot, so cut me off if, uh, if you need to say something. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you so much. And uh, what do you think, Joel? Uh, would it make sense to start discussing Meander now? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, let me get my uh, let me get my scratch buffer open here. Um, so I'm gonna kind of do. Um, so like I said earlier, uh, for those who weren't here, I'm I'm not a big uh, presenter person. Um, kind of setting up a presentation with slides and all that i i don't <laughs> i don't do that kind of thing um so instead what i like to do is i like to um just have uh, a REPL open you know a REPL open closure buffer open um and we can step through some examples together um i picked um some okay so at least one i have one one sort of data set i have familiar familiarity with only a little bit though and then another one, uh, which my friend uh, pitched me last night, um, we'll, we'll look at that. I have no idea what's in there. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of explore that data set together uh, using Meander. That ought to be fun, right? Like a little improv. So, um, OK, so. Uh, um, is it OK to zoom in a little bit, maybe? Yes. Uh, let me, yeah, I was going to I was going to do that. Uh, let's see here. Um, I want to increase. And let me know. Oops. Oh, why does it do that? Uh, I may have to. Uh, is that good, or do I need to go even further? A little more would be good, I think. Okay. Let me go over to um, configuration here. Oops. For some reason, it's like when I toggle it, it it kind of like shrinks back. Uh, so let me see if let's try 36. Okay. I think there's like a refresh font. So font reload font. How about that? Is that good? Or even larger? I think it's good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Is every, anyone else? Okay. I think it's good. Yeah. Okay, you can always you can always go higher. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm I'm gonna do uh, this sort of like in two parts here. Um, we the 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 main branch that's currently recommended to use is um, the epsilon branch. That's the one that if you go to the GitHub page, which is uh, I should probably show that. Hey, Brooke, you're here. Um, meow. Sorry. There. No. <laughs> um, so uh, you can um, find this at uh, GitHub, no prompt, meander. Um, this is the project page. Um, there's some stuff here on the on the README, uh, but you'll you'll probably want to head um, to the the docs, um, which I believe you could get to through Clojures. I don't. I think there used to be a doc thing here, but. Um, yeah, so you'll probably want to look at the CLJ doc um, that has, um, there should both be articles there, but you can always go to the doc folder and look at the cookbook or, um, you know, we have we have different things in here. So um, if you get stuck on anything or, or have questions, uh, this would be a good place to start. Lots of people have chipped in. Um, so yeah, uh, now let me go back to Emacs. Okie dokie. All right. Good. Okay. Um, so um, 
first of all, uh, what what is the library? The the library is uh, marketed as a as a as a tool for transparent data manipulation, um, and the idea is that um, we're going to take uh, pattern matching um, and we're going to we're going to make it um, we're going to make it do more. D does everybody know what pattern matching is? Does everybody? Does anybody not know what it is? Maybe that's a better question to, to ask. Yeah. I need I need to know. <laughs> yes or no. Okay. Is I like a, it's like a trick, like a is there a no, it's not a trick question. It or, or no, it's sort of like if, if you if you've done uh, <clears throat> it could be core match, it could be I've done Haskell programming or I've done OCaml or ML or so I know what pattern matching is. Um, when I say pattern matching, I'm not referring to string pattern matching like regular mm -hmm. expression. I'm referring to structural pattern matching, which is um, I'm expressing um, binding variables. Um, with a, a syntactic form that is analogous to the data structure that I am trying to get those bindings from. So, mm. um, so we we have a, a like a really really weak form of this uh, enclosure might be uh, vector uh, vector destructuring. People call mm. it destructuring. So this is what this this says here. It literally this is uh, this semantically what this says is that you know there's a vector here. And I want to bind the first two elements of this vector to the first two elements of this sequence. So that is that is semantically what that means. Um, and it's using um, a, a get semantic where if the elements aren't there, no problem. You know, A and B could be nil, right? So uh, that's that's a sort of like a a, a version of this. Um, so. Uh, what pattern matching? So a, a pattern matching uh, traditionally you would this would mean that there's uh, a vector, okay, and that the vector has two elements, and I'm going to bind the two elements, um, you know, the first two elements of that uh, vector to A and B. And if it's not a vector, and if it doesn't have two elements, then the pattern doesn't match, and we're not doing any binding, you know, um, that's that's what that means, and so. That's what meander is the part partly in the tra tra tradition of in terms of uh, pattern matching, right? So we're not going to go and put nils everywhere uh, because um, you know we, we want we want to like have patterns that express our intention and um, match the shape that we're uh, intending for it to match, right? Um, so um, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, and we'll 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 go through Can this. I ask um, you about that? I don't want yeah, to slow you down too much. I'm just curious. No, like, no, no, please. I'm when when you said pattern matching, uh, my mind did just go to string, and, you know, text, whatever. Um, yeah. Is there like a, is pat, when, you, when one says pattern matching, does it more uh, canonically mean what you just described in some yes. context? Is well, that like a mathematical or? Yeah, it's normally bracketed or, as like structural pattern matching or. Mm. Yeah, something like that. Um, but that's that's why I threw that bit in about strings because often if you go and search for pattern matching uh, in term in programming, a lot of times you're going to encounter, at least in um, you know maybe Wikipedia articles, you're going to encounter initially um, string pattern matching. Mm. Um, so uh, structural pattern matching is <clears throat> basically an extension of that from you know going from uh, strings. Uh, instead to other data structures so um, I, see. I see yeah so like oh, so in that sense it's the more abstract or yeah well, With the I, string is just a kind of data structure is, is right. what you're saying then I, I get it okay yeah so another example would be uh you know map destructuring uh, and you know, actually maybe a better example because uh, would be like uh um you know, javascript where you do something um like like this, okay? You say, and if you don't know JavaScript, that's okay. Um, what this says is that th that this map over here, this object has the keys foo and has the keys bar. So this is pretty much like enclosure where you say, you know, keys foo bar, and that means that the 
let's put the let's put a let here. If I'm doing a terrible job, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but that means that over here, um, we 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 were saying that this whatever this value is m, it's an associative value. It's a map, and from that map, we can get the keys uh, foo and bar. And when we do, we're going to bind that to foo and bar respectively. So this is essentially what this is. The semantic here is this is, you know, foo is uh, get m foo and bar is get m bar. But like I said, semantically, what this is saying is that that m is a map, and there are these keys inside the map, foo and bar. And we're going to bind those uh, to the to the variables foo and bar. So pattern matching is, is a lot like this. Um, it's the same idea. It's the same idea as that as it's a little more closer to this, where the the pattern. This is what we call a pattern. Um, represents a uh, a data structure, and we're going to apply this pattern to that data structure in order to extract bindings for it from it. Um, but and more more generally, um, it, it it says that it the a, the pa a pattern is a shape. It says when I have a um, an object, I'm going to see if that object matches the shape described by this pattern. And if so, the bindings are going to tell me how it how it matched. All right. And so once I get into some examples here, I hope hopefully this will clear it up. Um, so. Uh, apologies um, if it's a little hand wave. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I'm not sure it's yeah. I'm I'm not sure it's um really pertinent. Um, go for it. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> um, do you know why the in the the structuring um that for example you just showed um oh. the foo and the keys are <clears throat> put in a vector rather than a list or set or whatever. So um, I don't know, but I can I can I can sort of uh, imagine perhaps why. Uh, so this actually is, I believe, um, it, I believe it. If you go look at this, so the it, what you want to look at is um, closure core uh, destructure. Mm -hmm. This is the function that um, will take this form. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I believe it. Oops, let's go. And let's put M right here. This is what the the let macro uses. This is what um, um, Defin uses. It's uh, under the hood for doing all the destructuring. So you can see here um, what destructuring does is it sets up these bindings as M is a map. Uh, it asks. Uh, by the way, so this is this is important to know because this is the cost that you pay every time you use this form. So it's just good good to see this. Um, what this says is that um, you can just ignore this. Uh, that this is a map, um, and <clears throat> um, whoops, keys. Let's put keys. My bad. Keys. Okay, here we go. Okay, and so here you can see that it it rewrote it to to this right here. Why is it keys? I, I don't know, but I do know that if I were to switch this like this, um, this is how you do it without using keys, uh, where you put the binding first and then the key that it's at. I be honest with you, I'm not really sure why that was the decision uh, that they went with um, is it, for it, for this. But I, I, I just want to interject I, real quick. It, oh yeah. Keys is for uh, for keywords because I think you can also use strings there. Yep, so you can use stirs. string keys for the map. Yeah. Yep, you can use stirs and you can also yeah. use sims as well. Um, I, I'm wondering uh, maybe maybe if this was this was designed so that eventually it could be extensible, you know, and maybe it just never was, but it totally could be. Um, there could be a multi method in core where you could extend what that means. I think that would be awesome, but crazy. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so I don't know why this is the way that it went. I find this syntax um, really unintuitive, and it actually gets worse uh, the more that you do the, the more that you do this because you can actually even go further in here. You know, you can say like, well, I want to go look up the key foo, and then you know that the value there is a vector, and then I'm going to pull a and b out of it. So you end up reading um, sort of uh, from uh, uh, right to left which is um, kind of strange to me when everything else is reading from left to right, that suddenly in this case, we're going to read from right to left. So why it's that way, I don't know. That's just the way it is um, for maps. Um, and also, uh, I should point out too that we don't have any sort of syntax for things like sets or anything like that. And there's, there's reasons for that, which I will uh, get into here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> OK, so let's, let's get into some meander here. Um, I, I went to this website. Uh, so like I said, recently I got into mid journey and stable diffusion. And so there you're entering a prompt and uh, you're getting an image out. And uh, one of the ways you can interact with mid journey is you can uh, <laughs> give it an, an, an initial image to sort of draw inspiration from. Um, and uh, then you, uh, you know, and, and a prompt um, with it. So uh, what I, uh, one of the websites I like uh, to visit for this kind of stuff is oldbookillustrations.com. They have all kinds of cool uh, old pictures and stuff like that. But on the website, on every page, um, there is a bit of JSON that describes um, what that, uh, like basically all the information that's presented on the page about the illustrator, et cetera, uh, techniques used um, are there. So uh, I went and scraped the whole site um, and got all the JSON and we can kind of uh, dig through that. Um, and maybe uh, put together uh, a prompt um, just as sort of like a, uh, a fun example. I, I don't know. And then we can look at some other stuff too. So, okay. Uh, so I have uh, this directory full of uh, JSON files. Um, the first one, um, you, if you use file seek, uh, the reason I'm calling rest here is because the first one is a directory um, and we don't want that. So we're just gonna throw that away. And then for um, each of uh, each of the data files, I'm just going to use uh, JSONista to um, read the value out of that file. And um, let's I don't know, let's take ten of those. See what that looks like. Actually, let's take one. I forgot we're on a large screen. Okay. So um, here is our data. Looks like this. Um, there we go. So it has the key book, illustration, creator, and a page URL. Well, this is where it came from. Description. By the way, I did notice too, interesting, that uh, this is a misspelling here. <laughs> so uh, that's something you could fix. Um, so like the goal here would be, I want to, um, I want a few things out of here. Um, so like I said, the, uh, a mid journey prompt is going to have, if you're going to use an image, it's going to put a, there's going to be a URL right here. Um, it's going to have, um, some, uh, and then you've got your, you've got your prompt, <laughs> prompt here and then maybe some extra parameters that you can throw such as the, you know, the aspect ratio or, um, uh, the, the, the image weight, like how, how much influence do you want the image? Uh, to have on the prompt. So um, just kind of like looking at this data, we might kind of figure out like how we would, we, we, we could do this and just plain old closure. Uh, so we see there's a title here, um, there's an author. So um, maybe we would want to use the author. Um, some other things that are useful here are, are the technique. Um, so that's, that's cool. Um, this format. <laughs> <laughs> there's hello yeah what oh oh <laughs> you just sneezed so, did you have a question no sorry continue uh so, i just you definitely need the caption which is an old philanderer <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have to have the caption <laughs> so hey these are these are old book illustrations okay there's some weird stuff in here uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that our generation is definitely out of touch with. Um, okay, so uh, the format here: uh, portrait. 
Um, so there's actually, if we were to go through and look at the data set, there's, there's actually like uh, just two. There's um, portrait and then there's landscape. So we could, we could use that, right, to sort of inform um, our, our aspect ratio here. And um, yeah, so then as, as Brooke just mentioned, uh, the description uh, or the caption uh, could, be, could be useful. OK, so let's start with um, just uh, some, some, some basic stuff here. OK, so now that we know what this data looks like, um, how can we start to uh, transform it or, or kind of query it um, with Meander? OK, so uh, there, um, on Epsilon, there's a, a few different ways to do this. But we're going to primarily focus on two of the operators there, which are uh, find and uh, search. Um, and that's probably what we're going to spend most of the time with. There's other ones that we could look at, but um, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to those. Um, so uh, what find, uh, the, the basically the, what these two operators do, um, find takes uh, some input data. So uh, in this case, let's say it's the um, first of our, of our data. And then it's going to take um, a, a sequence of, of uh, pairs, which is a, a, a pattern, and then um, a, a return uh, a, or a, a, and an action. Okay. And the action is going to be just closure code. And the pattern is going to be um, a uh, meander pattern. And we're slow to un unpack what that is. So, like I said earlier, a pattern is a, uh, a form that uh, represents the shape of data. And what we say in pattern matching is that if this object um, matches the pattern, then we want to perform the action action. Okay. So the most general pattern um, that we can use, and I'm just going to put this right here. So the most general pattern that we can use is this underbar here. And the underbar. Um, and you can follow it by, you know, whatever you want. Um, it doesn't, as long as it starts with an underbar. This says it's anything. Anything in the universe goes. I'll match anything. Um, this is kind of like a, you know, you can think of this as your default. And um, this is the action. This is what I'm going to return over here. So if I evaluate this on first data, which is this thing right here. Actually, we don't even need to comment this. We just leave it right there. So if we look right here. Um, there we go. It just says uh, hello because it is true that this matches anything. In fact, um, like I said, you can just you know, hand it anything. Well, it will work. OK, but what we're dealing with here is um, a map. And um, well, actually, let me step one more level up here. OK. So, uh, Tim, uh, <laughs> Tim, I have a question for you. Are you there, Tim? Yeah. What What's the question? Oh, uh, so uh, would you uh, would you say we should, you know, look at the the map part of it first, um, or uh, the logic variable uh, first? <laughs> <laughs> uh i i i think uh uh there but i think logic variables okay let's do that cool. okay yeah all right all right let's do that okay so um stepping up one more level of generality um we want to um we want to bind uh whatever it is that we're matching to uh this variable here so if you see this this question mark x um I'm sure most people here are familiar with uh, data log uh, or datomic or um, many Canran or core logic or something. You see this notation question mark uh, at the at the start of a symbol name. Um, and that just means that um, the <clears throat> whatever whatever value, uh, whatever target value I'm looking at this thing, um, I'm going to bind that value to this to this symbol here, right? Um, so uh, this would be if I bring x over here, 
um, it's going to just give me the whole entire uh, thing back. Now, there's more to it than that. If you've used uh, um, any of the things that I mentioned before, you also know that this uh, represents uh, one and only one value. So once I bind this value, if I see that variable anywhere else in my expression, it represents the same value. Okay, so to, to, to drive this home a little bit, let's suppose that I have a pair of, of, uh, of numbers here. Okay, if I put x, uh, well, actually, let's just start with this first. So if I do x and then y, um, I'm going to draw over here x, y. Um, then when I evaluate this, we see that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to, to 2. Okay. If we then put this here, what this is saying is that there is some value x, and some value y, and then there's that value x again. So whatever this x is, it had better also, this x had, had better be the same thing. So if I evaluate this, nothing changes. But if I put a 3 here and I evaluate this, um, I don't get a match and find returns nil. So we, we failed to match the pattern. Does that make sense to everybody? OK, so it's just like in, uh, it's just like in algebra. If you have a, an x in your formula or in your expression, wherever that x is, it represents the same value. And uh, in, in uh, logic programming, uh, it's the same thing, right? It's, it means the same thing. OK. All right, so uh, what, what can we do with this? Well, if we go back to our um, data, we wanted to get some stuff out of here. So we're going to, uh, because we're interested in matching a map, we're going to, um, our, our pattern is going to look like a map. And the, like, the first thing that we're probably interested in is, uh, let's just, just, let's just get the title just to start out. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy this right here. Um, so I, I want what's in the book key and I want this title here. So I'm going to get rid of all these other things. Okay. And then just like enclosure, I'm going to use the, um, the ampersand and I'm going to use my underbar. So what this is saying is that I want to match a map. It has a key book. Well, the value, it's a vector. And the first value of that vector uh, has this uh, as, um, as a map with a title and a key uh, with this value here. So if I run this, uh, say, well, let's just use true. So there we go. That's that's true. But we just want the title. So let's replace title with the logic variable title. And now if I evaluate this, getting title, there it is. I got my title out. And if you want to grab more stuff in here, um, by the way, so look, before I do that, if I take this out, OK, if I take this out and I run this now, I'm not going to get anything because this is not destructuring. It's, it's not destructuring. This actually says that I'm interested in matching a vector with one value in it, which has a map, has a title. OK, so that it's really important to to understand this uh, distinction. It's, it is not destructuring. Um, because um, there are, you know, there are cases, let, let's suppose for a minute that you were doing something like uh, writing a macro where the syntax does matter. And it really does matter that you have a vector with the number of arguments that you expect it to have. Um, that's this is a use case where you want, you know, to to to, re to reflect that, right? I expect two values because if I didn't get two values, then something's wrong, and I need another condition to handle that. So one of the things about pattern matching that, um, and I have a preference to this uh, that's different from destructuring is destructuring is very loose and it's it's it like has no problem with like data being absent and handing you nil. Pattern matching, by contrast, needs to, you need to be a little bit more specific about um, what uh, you want it to do, um, because it's not just going to assume that nil is OK and um, you know I can just fill everything with nil if I don't get anything, right? So that's, a, that's a design, an intentional design decision. I have a question. Sure. Um, I think. Uh... 
So here um, in this find function, there's kind of like two things happening. Uh, you're you having the first argument or the second argument, I guess, is saying um, we're looking for something with this shape. Right. And that can be more or less specific. And then, yeah. the, and then after that, you're saying, okay, well, then we get some sort of output that it's possible to build so long as it's been a match. So yeah. in the in the library, is there like a more fundamental, like is this is this kind of a high level <clears throat> function? No, this or isn't a function. Two? This is a macro. There is a functional, uh -huh. there there is a functional component of the library. So mm -hmm. um, there are two parts of the library. There's the compiled stuff, which is uh, everything that's in the core namespace, uh, the main meander epsilon namespace. So you find, search, match, uh, rewrite. Um, those are all uh, macros. And uh, they compile to um, they compile to um, closure code. So if I um, let's see, how does it? Just, uh, I forget how's it macro expand all. Okay, so you can see that this is the code that it's that it's dumping out, right? So there is a functional version of this code um, or, or or the stuff where you can express these patterns as uh, quoted forms and then dynamically execute them. That's a different part of the library. And you know, I encourage people to use that when that comes up. Um, the, 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 the difference is, is that this code is almost always going to be much, much faster because the compiler does a lot of stuff to make sure that whatever this, uh, whatever this <laughs> abstraction costs you, it costs you the least amount, it's like as least as I can get it. So, and that's also the, the attraction of pattern matching too, is that there's known ways of compiling pattern matching uh, to, to um, good good programs that, that perform pretty well. Um, so um, yeah, but but that's there. And I, I, if it's not documented, um, I, I, we can make sure that, it, that um, we get some information in our docs about that. Okay, uh, so we've got the. Can I can I ask yeah. one more question? Absolutely. Um, I can't think of a good reason for this, but is there a way to make it so that this would only match if there were no extra keys, like there was only a book key? Because right now this is matching, even though like there's illustration creator, right? Um, and I could see yep. why the vector wouldn't match, but yeah, right. So this is this is something that. Um, I've addressed and I have addressed in um, in epsilon. I'm glad, that, or sorry, I've addressed in zeta, but I'm glad that you brought this up because so in epsilon and prior versions, when you use a map or uh, a set, um, the pattern is actually saying it is a sub map or a subset. Um, and I mainly made that decision to improve the ergonomics of the library. Um, in other libraries where you have map pattern matching. Um, or set pattern matching, um, it's a lot more strict. So it says that the set has exactly this many elements, or um, the map has these keys and values. Uh, and so um, I found that really uh, kind of like a pain in the ass. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's hard to say it. Um, so I just went with because maps are so often used in closure. I didn't want to, uh, you know. Um, at the time, I didn't want the programmer to constantly have to, you know, do yeah, this. Add the, the yeah, it yeah. wouldn't. However, I wouldn't think of it until it didn't match, basically. Right. <laughs> However, in epsilon, what I've done is I've said no. This is actually the right direction to go. Um, I, I think that is important, but um, there are ways to um, avoid that. But you can extend the language to, you know, say, hey, I didn't really want to say this all the time right so but I, and I don't think we're going to get to that but that that is um, something that would be interesting. By the way, if you wanted to if you wanted to say that here let me just finish um you just uh you would just say um uh, and quoted map and now if I run this it won't right it says basically because what this is saying is that the it's a map with the key book and you know that that has this shape 
and nothing else. Oh, why? I guess we why, don't have to go too deep. Falcon, why, we can talk about that later. Yeah, why? Just so the reason it's a quoted map is because if you use a uh, a map without the quote, it says this is a sub map, and the empty sub map is is a submap of every map, right? Even the empty map itself. So this will still match, right? Basically, what I'm trying to say, so when you quote, this says, no, 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 that value is exactly this value, right? So the rest of the map is the empty map. So that's what the quote is saying. Okay. Um, yeah, again, sort of like this. Someone had another question? Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, I, yep. I, I had a one small question. Yeah. Maybe it's jump. Maybe uh, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, could you use tilde map as well instead of quote map? Would that oh, do the uh, same? Thing? Like, uh, yes, yes, you could. Okay. Cool. Right. So, uh, just uh, just we hadn't talked about tilde, but uh, tilde yeah. is is how. Um, how you bring in a value from the outside world. So if I have um, something like um, good, old, good old foo, actually, let's just let, let foo map. And I wanted to bring foo in. That's how I would do it. If I just ran this, it, it's, 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 um, we're going to go here. Actually, this would probably be better. So let me go back to this. And I'm gonna just put tilde foo here, and I'm gonna replace that with the title. So that'll work. So what this is actually doing is it'll substitute the value of foo here. This is how you get uh, sort of like uh, if you wanted to, ha if you had a function where maybe this is um, title uh, key, right? Or actually as well. Um, let's say book key so um we just book key book val or, or book key val grab that um all right and so if i call this now and um i can just emulate get here um so if we use title um, I should get that if I use author one um, book key book. Oh, right, because it's not at the beginning. It's uh, here. You misspelled author. I did. Oh, I did. Jeez. Author one. Did I? Um, book key val. Okay. Uh, let's let's come back to this because this is wrong. Uh, or at least I, yeah, I'm getting off track here. Um, sorry. So title. Okay. Okay. So we wanted to get the other ones. Uh, I'll come back to that other stuff. Um. We wanted to get um, the author. Okay. Third one. Hey. Um, so there's that, um, and then we could we could continue doing this with with, with the rest of the data structure. So we could just um, maybe we could grab um, uh, stick with the format. So um, maybe I want this technique. No. Care about this? Uh, I don't care about this. Um, back to this in just a minute. And Brooke wanted the caption, so the caption. <laughs> um, 
And oh, we wanted the image URL because uh, we need that for the prompt to start the prompt out. Um, and then we don't care about this description right now. Although I guess we could, I suppose we could just do that for now. Maybe we could come back to that. Um, so those are those are our bindings. Um, so we've got the title, uh, the author, the image URL. Okay, there's that. Um, and then the format, because we wanted to make the format um, be the, or we wanted to use that for the aspect ratio. Um, was there anything else in here that we wanted? Uh, I don't think we wanted that. Uh, it's hilarious. Old womanizers this is a terrible example we should use. Let's just check out what's its second data. <laughs> so I've been on the screen the whole time. I'm sorry, people. Uh, uh, kissing couple. That's that's better. All right. Terrible data set. Whatever. Um, but definitely not not horrible. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah, um, John, maybe maybe it is a good moment to stop for a moment. We have 30 minutes to the official time, so yeah. plenty of time. And maybe it is a good moment for you to kind of think about what else you wish to be telling. And maybe it is a moment for the people who are new to Meander to think if there are any questions about it. And yeah, just like a pause for a moment to think about where sure. we are. And after the, the end of these uh, official remaining 30 minutes, uh, we, uh, a few of us may like to stay and chat for those who can stay. And by the way, thank you for the friends uh, who have joined us, the bunch of friends who joined after, after the official start. Um, yeah, sorry for stopping you. No worries. Um, yeah, OK. So um, right, our goal is to, to, uh, to get this prompt. And we've got uh, the image URL. Uh, we've got the title, we've got the author, and the format. Um, so uh, what uh, what's next? So we wanted to turn this into a string. Um, so I'm going to try to step it up a little bit. Um, so string. Uh, OK. And then uh, so there's our image URL. And then we have the, the title. Um, we're going to put by in here, because that's normally what we do. And this format um, is um, it's going to be one of two two types of formats. So um, it's going to be either portrait or um, landscape. So right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, aspect ratio, and I'm going to just say um, uh, if um, ratio. So if the um, Get closer string in here. So if um, string starts with, is that how it goes? Yeah. Uh, our format starts with uh, portrait, then, um, then we want our uh, aspect ratio to be 2, 3. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to assume it's landscape and make it. Um, Three, two. Right. So let's just see what our aspect ratio looks like. Okay, two, three. And if we go, um, should probably like find one that has um, a landscape. To, uh, so, um, but we'll do that in just a minute. Actually, let's do this. So we have all of our data. Um, we can actually just map over this. Um, so let's map over. Um, I'm going to call this um, make make prompt. So we'll take our data. Do we create a function, and now we'll just map over our data make prompt. Um, yeah, there's four thousand of them, so there's probably a hundred of them still. So we can definitely see that we're getting a three two in here. So let's just double check and look at the last one. So um, in data th uh, three or two, is it zero based, right? So there it is, it's landscape. Okay, um, so that's that's working well. Um, 
And let's just, um, whoops. I'm going to do this to kind of keep my function. Um, and then make my data. So let's stick with nth data times three. Okay, now I'm going to okay. Oops, make what? Go two, three, there's our aspect ratio. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to tuck this away for just a minute so that I can see what this is looking like. So we'll also see too here that it looks like the byline is is coming in the comma in the middle. Um, but before I address that, um, what I, so actually I, let's let's address that now. So one of the things you can do uh, with this library is that you can use regular expression um, as well. So um, the the author is, uh, is we can represent that with a regex pattern. So um, this is the first operator I'm going to show you, which is MRE. And so there's num a number of operators that are in the, the standard library that you can use for um, various things. Um, so this one just takes um, a regex pattern. I think if we look at the documentation here, it'll explain how it works. Um, so it, it um, whatever the regex pattern is, if it matches, then it successfully matches. Um, but we can also do other things too here. Like you'll notice that we've got the capture groups in here and we can also um, pattern match on those as well. So uh, one thing that we could do is we could say, okay, well, um, I have a, um, I, I may have like this comma separated thing here. Um, so um, let's do that. So whatever the author is at the beginning dot plus, and I don't, um, I don't want this piece. So I'm just going to put that, um, just going to do that. Um, oops. Actually, let's just do this. Let me just grab everything up to the comma. So my first, my first um, comma, and then actually, let's just say it's not a comma. Right, um, and this should say comma. Um, and then this is not, um, uh, this is just, just not this. So I've got two pieces here. Um, I don't want to put a question mark here because I don't want to go. This would be the last name. And this would be the first name. So let's see what we get um, just by looking at the last name and the first name. We got nil. So let's go back to looking at what that is again. Okay, there should be a comma there. And if anybody um, notices that I'm doing something wrong, um, believe that's right, it's not a comma, but let's just, just switch it to this real quick. Let's see what we get. We don't get anything. Do we get anything at all? Oh, I know why. I'm sorry. There we go. I forgot to mention. So this actually, um, just like uh, RE matches in Clojure, it's the vector that it returns is going to, the first one is going to be the entire match, and the other one, the other pieces are going to be the parts that, um, that, you, um, that you didn't match. Um, but we don't, I know that we don't want this com this comma here. Um, so let me go back to what I had before. Comma, so it's not a comma. Um, plus followed by that. So there we go. Uh, you can see here we got that, but we really don't, don't want that. Um, we don't want this comma here. So let's do this. Let's put that in here. All right. And then uh, we'll grab this um, this piece here. So there we go. We got our first name and we got our last name. Cool. Um, so this regular expression matches. We're going to bind the first and last name here. All right. And now we can put that into our prompt down here. We'll just replace author um, with 
this and actually for probably being nice to ourselves uh, we, we could just do something like this to say all this byline and um stir space byline okay what, do, what requires an even number of forms i'm sorry oh Yes, it'll complain if you give it the wrong number of forms. Okay, cool. So there is that, and we don't want that format. We want that aspect ratio. We need a space here. Um, what else do we need? Is the caption? Caption. Should probably be more appropriate. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so that's, um, yeah, that's just a sort of quick, quick demo of, uh, well, that's not really a quick demo, but the demo of how you could pull something like this apart. Um, you should probably uh, just uh, take a minute to like, uh, just talk about um, some of the other things that you can do. Um, I want to talk about uh, search um, because uh, that's important. So um, if this is uh, confusing to people um, or, or, um, or anything like that. Um, I'm definitely able to help more um, outside of this discussion. Um, I just kind of want to show like what what you can do with this. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, so uh, let me do one more thing here. Um, let's um, let's just do some exploratory uh, data analysis, right? Some EDA. Um, let's take that. The, that um, let me show you an example of things that you can do. So even if you let's say weren't going to, you know, use Meander for um, any kind of like um, you know uh, real work inside of uh, your application, what you might use it for is uh, exploring data and and looking for stuff in data, or um, just pulling something out and a pre-processing step, uh, maybe offline um, or online. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's something quick and dirty. So um, one thing that you can do is, so earlier we had that whole data set, right? Um, so this is, count, okay, so, uh, that's uh, 4,000 4, records in there. Okay, so, but let's say, um, so we know that, um, we know that the data um, is, I believe it is a seek, right? So. Um, well, let's just call seek one, just so it's a seek. All right, so um, just like with vectors, we can bind stuff, and let's just say we want like the third one, so fourth one. Okay, there it is. Not not terribly exciting. Um, instead, what we want to do? What if we wanted to say like, well, I want to find. Um, I want to find just um, anything in here. Right, so we will start with something like this. It says, I don't care what's at the beginning. There's something in here, and there's something afterwards. So this, this can match everything in the, um, the data structure. And so I evaluated that without any take on it. So now Cider's off printing a lot of lines. Um, so let me kill this buffer here. Let's go back to Let's just do take one okay there we go all right all right so uh now what we can say is like well um maybe i want all of the so here's book and here's title um just like the other pattern here i don't care what comes after that uh but i know i want um i want the title okay title take um, let's take 10 of those. So there it goes. So this pattern is saying that, so when, when you run search, what search says is find me all of the answers, find me every answer that satisfies this, this pattern. So, um, our input data was, uh, the sequence of all of our, our, uh, book illustration information. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look for a, um, a value inside of there that has this shape. So if I were to cons on um, or like uh, concat here, 
you know, one, two, three, four, or something like, like that. Um, you know, this will still work. It'll still return the, um, it'll still return all the data that it did before um, because these values will not match this pattern and thus we, we can ignore them. So you can kind of think of search as uh, a more general type of filter um, where you could uh, look for, um, you know, arbitrary values that, that match a shape and it could be a seeker, um, a map or what have you. Um, so we could do something like that with um, you know, just an ordinary map here, if I have A1, B2, let's say I don't know, um, let's say I'm like looking for some data. Um, I don't know, um, I don't know um, uh, what, what, you know, what it is, um, or say, let's say I'm looking for a certain key, right? I don't know, what, I don't know what key it is, but I know the value of it must be one. So I can put this logic variable here at the start of this map and it will go and find uh, those keys. So if I did something else like this, right? Let's say I had, um, just to make a really cool example here. Let's say I had um, some other keys like this, right? I got A1, B2, C3. And I want to find uh, two keys where the value is one, right? Okay, so I can do that. Um, it's gonna, it's, now you'll notice that what it returns is a, a set with two values in it, A and C and C and A. Um, why does it do that? Well, because maps are not ordered. They don't have an inductive data structure, uh, inductive, an inductive de definition. And so the pattern matcher or the pattern searcher, it can't assume that you want the answers in some uh, order. Um, and so it gives it to you in all the possible combinations. So um, the, the um, ideas from combinatorics are, are kind of built into this as well, right? So um, this is different from the pattern that I just showed you because uh, lists and, and seeks do have inductive definitions. And so when we're searching through that data structure, there's only one way to um, spit out all of the solutions. And they're going to go in the order um, from, from left to right uh, of the data structure. But for maps uh, and also for sets, if we uh, create um, sets in here, um, this is going to uh, blow up, but um, if I if I have a set and I want to find, you know, all the ways that I could uh, pull out uh, two elements of this set, um, then I, I would do something like that. You'll see I guess all the answers there for you. Um, another way that you can find information uh, or find data, um, so let's take our data set again. And um, let's say that you really just, um, you really don't care about the structure so much. Uh, you know that there's something in there um, and um, you, you, uh, you don't know where it is, uh, but you wanna find it, okay? So we were looking for that title earlier um, and I'm gonna do this. I'm also gonna do a take um, 10 here. So this is, you can kind of think of this like jQuery uh, where this is saying, um, hey, give me, um uh find find in this data this um this map that has a, a key title and the value title and just dump that out for me so if i run this again uh i get nil um that's interesting why did i get nil uh well, maybe because the key is a string oh thank you very much <laughs> okay cool so there we go and uh, so here's the thing uh you it, well, after i ran this um, thank you very much, Dan. Um, I, I've, I've got some nils here, right? So that means that in this data set that there are uh, maps that have titles that are nil. Um, if we go and grab some captions, um, caption, well, let's just leave it as, let's just do this so that we can uh, caption. Okay, there's that philanderer. So it'll find it. Not everything has a caption. Um, no, not everything has a, a country, um, page URL, stuff like that. It's an awful one again. I'm so sorry. Um, image URL, I uh, didn't find it. That's not right. Um, let's see. Image URL, why didn't it find that? It seems like it would find that. Okay. Well, found that one. Um, I didn't find this one. That's odd. I... We'll probably check into to see why that is. Um, okay, 
some other things that are kind of important uh, too. Um, there's this. Um, so let's one, two, three, four. Um, let's say that you um, you you were interested in. Um, So like I said, this thing can have more than one clause. You can do you can do um, return more than one answer here. So this will return one and two. Both of these patterns match um, an element, or sorry, a, a vector with four values. So uh, let's say if I had, um, let's just do this real quick. So this one says uh, two, and this one says um, one and three. Okay, so I, when I run this, both of these patterns are, are satisfied. Um, however, if I change this one, only this clause will return an answer. So in, um, I know this is a contrived example, but using the other pattern matching stuff that you've seen here, you can use search to find a whole bunch of um, uh, you know, different, you, you can re return a whole bunch of different values. So if you have uh, more ambiguity, um, or if you just want you know, to tag two different things as um, you know, uh, tag A, tag B, um, right? you, could, you could do something like this. Um, what else? Uh, Tim, what else am I forgetting here? Um, yeah, well, by the way, we have 10 minutes to the official yeah. end, so it is good time kind of to think about other topics, maybe maybe you like to say something about the compiler and how it works or would it be a topic for another time uh, i mean actually after uh, <laughs> after this i kind of feel like uh maybe this uh you know might might be too big of a a discussion um uh, like to fit in the space of um uh, the amount of time here um so uh what's that I was just gonna. This is like another topic, but I just thought I'd throw it out there because I was just thinking it might be interesting, also for data, um, the data data oriented data science context is um, uh, we have these um, kind of pseudo primitives <laughs> that are <laughs> available from the TechML data set. Um, uh, library which can represent uh well yeah represent a data set as a sequence of maps okay and when, when you were demonstrating the search uh, among other things i was kind of wondering how it would feel to use meander working on a data set uh, and there's you know some of it is the syntax of meander itself and um, right and some of it is like like more interest or more technical stuff around like performance like what if you because you know tech about data set has like a really highly optimized setup for using or manipulating a lot of data in memory yeah that's that's one of exploration uh... um and and meander also is looks like very good for exploration uh so could the two be combined and still sort of uh, preserve those optimizations in data in TechML data set? <clears throat> so um, that's that that's a hard question for me to answer right now. Yeah, um, yeah. That's but what I so I know that that's that's um one of Nuremberg's uh, joints, right? Or he's at least yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> so I know Nuremberg had said something a long time ago about um, trying to to fuse. Um, some of the stuff that he's been looking at uh, with Meander, and uh, I, I I think yes, that's possible. Um, however, uh, I would um, I, I would want to I would probably want to like talk with Chris personally um, and uh, learn more about the library. Um, the the so the Epsilon version of the library is um, not uh, very extensible. I mean. You you can make it do new things. You can make it uh, pattern match on other you know um, types of data like whatever their special 
um, data types are in that project. It's just a little bit more difficult. The, the newer version of the library that I'm working on um, would be far more extensible, way easier to, to extend um, because I've moved uh, away from um, focusing on compilation first instead of uh, doing interpretation first because interpretation is easier to get correct and um, you can get pretty decent performance out of it as well. Um, whereas working with the compiler, one of the reasons I've kind of stopped working on Epsilon is that you know, the compiler can turn out great code um, for the most part, but it's, it's also harder to debug when it breaks. Um, and there are plenty of, well, not plenty of, but there are several corner cases and, and um, bugs in the compiler uh, that are just hard to, hard to solve. With an interpreter, it's much easier. Um, so yeah, I guess the, the, the short answer is, yeah, I, 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 I think, I think that's possible, right? Um, it just requires mm. knowing stuff, but it'd be yeah, fun I'll, just to like, try it without any change, you know, just see like how far, I mean, cause it, because it, it, you can always take a data set down to its, um, uh, you know, closure regular data structures so that it should be accessible. It'd be sort of fun to like see where you hit a wall, <laughs> like whether I, it's I, a size thing or ergonomics and you know. I, I totally agree. And there's, I, I mean, the the thing about this project is that it's, yes, it's a library, but um, if I'm being completely honest, it's, it's not just a library, it's a language, right? And, um, you know, personally, I've actually wanted to take it out of closure and rewrite the actual um, core, you know, ideas and philosophy of the language um, in like Go or something more low level um, and have it go really fast and just sort of be more like a, uh, a general purpose JQ on the command line where you can just, you know, pipe in some bytes and you can write uh, patterns that match those bytes and rip them apart and dump out whatever you want, right? Um, I really just want to go all in on data transformation, um, <laughs> like in between two pipes, that would be great. Um, that said, I mean, that's kind of a lot of work. Um, you know, I, I would much rather take the approach that you know, Chris is kind of doing, um, which is you know, how much can we leverage from, you know, things like the, the, the Python stuff that he's done I think that's like super exciting. Uh, I, I can't wait to try that out. Um, you know, where he's actually you've got like C Python uh, that you can call from Closure. I think that's great. Um, and I want to fuse some of these things together. Um, so yeah, and I, I should also say too, this is um, this is something that's really important. Um, I, uh, I I I burned out earlier this year. Um, from <laughs> from from compiler stuff, um, but, I mean there was other things involved too that in, in my burnout. But um, I I I did um, last year I was working on what they call a stage compiler, um, but basically it's a fancy way of saying um, you can actually um, interpret uh, the meander um, patterns, or you can compile them using the the same um, the same abstraction. So if you want code, then you run the code through, um, you interpret the code, or if you want, um, if you want closure values, like straight up answers, then you do it that way. And uh, <laughs> I spent a while on that and I got some really performant, awesome compiled code out, but there were problems with performance of the compiler um, and nobody wants to wait 30 seconds for, for code to compile. And I just, <laughs> just kind of gave up and, that's why I've sort of switched the um, the newer interpreter stuff. Um, yeah, <clears throat> um, it, it's it can do a lot. It's also just uh, it's hard. Like I said earlier, it's it's hard to cram all of that in a certain amount of time. And I'm also a terrible presenter, so like <laughs> if you just sit down and you know, spend the day together uh, doing different things, um, yeah, I mean we could we could we could learn a lot and we could figure out what's working and what's not working right right now for the most part 
Um, I'm the main user of the library uh, personally. Um, and there's other people that are using it, but I don't work with them. So I don't know what issues that they're working on, um, which is another way of saying, um, if you would like to work together, if you'd like to pair on something, or if you explore something together, um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. I, I have time for that. Um, if people are, are, are interested. Um, I've been working with one member of the community. Um, we get, usually get together on Thursday. Um, and we've been doing that for a while. Sometimes we miss a couple of weeks, but for the most part, uh, he's been helping me uh, to solve um, problems and discuss ideas and, and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we're approaching the official end. And really, uh, you know, a while, uh, Joel, maybe you uh, wish to take a few moments to think about kind of your concluding comments. I uh, just want to say that, you know, the, the spirit of this session you did is exactly the kind of thing that we are looking to have in this group. And it may be interesting for a few people to compare this session to the one we had a couple of months ago about closure work by our friend Paul, who demonstrated some processing of nested data with the closure work namespace. And so it was kind of fun to see really, uh, you know, similar handling of similar problems in really different approaches. And uh, yeah, and maybe uh, for anybody, it is a good time to think if, if you wish to say or ask anything before we stop recording. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you so much, Joel. So beautiful. Yes. And I just want to, you know, I have been a Meander user, so it is kind of exciting to see it kind of presented yeah. precisely this way. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, well, thank you for the kind words. I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a, a really harsh critic. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I, there's, I wish I could show more. Uh, there's a lot more here. There's a lot of really fascinating sort of philosophical uh, topics too. Um, that I didn't get to touch on, um, that I would definitely like to touch on, uh, maybe after the recording concludes. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I've always been very open to feedback and to criticism and to suggestions. Um, Tim, you know, has bounced tons of ideas off of him. I don't think I've ever rejected one and been like, no, Tim, this is a bad idea. So um, I've reflected a lot on those and, you know, the, the next iteration of the library has a lot of that reflection built into it. So that's that's coming. I'm not really sure when it's coming um, because I don't want to burn out again. Um, like I did earlier, so she was awful. I I, I, th I thought I had died as a programmer. I was like, I didn't even want to like open Emacs today. What's wrong with me? Um, but I don't feel like that anymore. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I, I, in terms of closing comments, I don't, I don't know what else to say, uh, but just get in touch with me. And I would love to spend more time um, with people in the community, uh, just pairing together or looking at problems together um, because it's, a, it's, just, it's, it's just nice to, and it doesn't even have to be on Meander stuff. It could be on anything else. Um, yeah, so that's all I gotta say. Thank you so much. Uh, such a kind invitation. Yeah, it is tempting to say, yes, yeah, let us collaborate. And, and uh, uh, food for thought for a few of us, I think. Um, maybe uh, one last comment is that the closure data science course a few of us are working on is delayed for a few reasons. And one of the things we're thinking about is how to bring the story of nested data, unstructured data to the coming closure data science course, which is where closure is maybe so different and so promising compared to other data science platforms like typical Python with the table data. And, and maybe this is one of the exciting parts that have to be kind of reimagined of what one could do doing data science with nested data and enjoying these. Um, amazing expressive libraries like Meander. So we're looking to bring that to the course we're 
creating and uh, still thinking a lot about it. And um, yeah, and uh, maybe it is a good time to say goodbye to the recording and then a few of us may like to stay just a couple of minutes to chat a little bit more. Uh, so uh, we will say goodbye to our listeners and see you on the next time.